AITA for wanting some space after a fight with my wife, or did I just cross the line? I'm a 30-year-old guy, married to my wife for seven years. We've got two kids, a nine-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl. I play a sport professionally, so I'm often away, caught up in training and games. Despite the hectic schedule, I work hard to give my family a comfortable life, and because of that, my wife can stay home with the kids. Last week, I came home earlier than usual after a training session got cut short. My wife was thrilled because it meant we could have dinner together as a family, a rare treat since I'm usually not home before the kids go to bed. But here's where everything went south. I had promised a teammate I'd go to a little kickback at his place after training. So I told my wife, apologizing, but I knew I'd just be stopping by to shower and get ready quickly before heading out again. She got really upset argued with me for a good 15 minutes, and said some things that stung. She accused me of being a distant father who barely knows his own kids. That hit hard and I got defensive, which led to me storming out. I ended up crashing at my teammate's place that night. I've tried apologizing, like, multiple times, but she's still giving me the cold shoulder. Honestly, I feel bad, but at the same time, I'm just trying to carve out a bit of time for myself. After everything, I'm left wondering, am I the asshole here, or is she blowing this out of proportion? I barely get any time to unwind, so I didn't think hanging with friends after a long day would be such a big deal. I apologize because I'm tired of the silent treatment and just want things to be normal again. My wife is unencumbered practically all the time. Our nine-year-old is in school from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m and our three-year-old just started a private preschool program that's four days a week from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Her sister also provides childcare whenever she needs it. I am always putting in my effort it just happens to be working to put money into our account rather than staying at home with the kids. I've taken care of them for a week before during off-season and let my wife go on a vacation. It was easier than expected. Definitely not a full-time job, especially now with the youngest in school. When we started dating, I was 18 and she was 23. Quickly, we realized that our values were different. She always wanted things to be more serious than they were. When I was 20, she got pregnant and refused to get an abortion, despite me telling her I didn't want to be a parent this young. She told me to grow up. Two years later, she proposed to me. She knew I would never propose, and we ended up getting married. Three years ago, we had another accident and our daughter was born. I am a professional athlete and out of the home, traveling to games and training most of the time. She is always angry with me, I give her anything and everything she needs, amazing home, car, private school and services for my son who has special needs, private preschool, so she can get a break from the little one, etc., but she is constantly complaining that my children barely know me, she never sees me, etc. We had a big fight last week that resulted in me spending the night at a teammate's house, and she's been giving me the silent treatment since then. Really, I want to tell her how she ruined my childhood by baby trapping me before I was ready, but I know that would end our relationship. We've been together for so long and I don't want to leave her, but I resent her. Is our relationship salvageable? Should I give up? For those of you saying I was an adult, Aikin is still very much a teenager and you know it. I've spoken to my wife on the phone, just left this morning again for training, was posting on the car ride there, and it was reassuring. She has no intentions of divorcing me, for those of you saying that is the best option. She said herself that I am a wonderful father and husband and apologized to me, I don't know how Reddit's judgment of me can be so incredibly skewed. I just want some peace for my family. Well, I just got off the phone with my wife, or should I say ex-wife. She saw the Reddit post, as a friend sent it to her I guess. She went completely off the rails and I had to hang up on her at one point. She is at her mom's house with the kids right now. My life has been completely ruined. I am devastated and hope that we can somehow repair this. Thanks for the genuine advice to those giving it. When she called me back after I hung up on her, she said she'd be filing for divorce in the morning. Comments Christopherson Allen Man, you sure did come here, trying to make yourself look good after getting destroyed from your other post.
OP, not trying to make myself look good. Just presenting the facts of the situation and getting my thoughts slash feelings off of my chest. No one needs to take my side, but this is how I feel, and I'm extremely distraught about the situation. Competitive Staff 38 Alwa Didums. Get a fucking therapist then. Lord Buff 74 That would eat into his training and hanging with the boys' time. OP, I don't think I'm the one who needs a therapist. My wife has severe trauma too from her childhood, where both of her parents abandoned her when she was young. She used to have a therapist but stopped going. A lot of the problems started then. Josiah Bartlett Bro just leave, you clearly despise and resent your wife. OOP, I don't despise her, I do resent her, but I want to fix that. I don't want to throw away 12 years of my life. I also don't want to be paying her spousal support slash child support, as I know she's not very good with finances, and I'm worried my children would not even actually see any of the funds. Melodic Salamander 55 You can file for full custody then since you're such a hands-on dad. Rosalie 83 He's not around enough for that. You need to be present to be a custodial parent. OOP, if we get divorced, I definitely will. No way I'm paying her child support when I know she won't spend the money on my children. Melodic Salamander 55 How do you plan to win any custody when, by your own accounts, you're busy with your team? When's the last time you bought your kids' clothes on your own, without your wife's input? How often do you grocery shop alone? When was the last time you attended a pediatric appointment without your wife holding your hand? OOP, I have a great lawyer. I am a stand-up guy, hard worker, and have access to childcare when I'm away. My wife, on the other hand, would be unemployed with a public defender and a history of mental hospital admissions in college. I would be able to get custody easily and already have private nannies and tutors lined up if needed. Do noise 9837. The facts are that no one stole your childhood but you. You choose to have irresponsible sex, you chose to date and marry someone you didn't want to. You chose to be irresponsible again and impregnate her again. You chose a career where she has to do 99% of the parenting. Throwing money at your kids doesn't make you a dad. OP, irresponsible sex, by that you mean sex with a monogamous partner using birth control. That resulted in an unwanted pregnancy. Okay, she knew what career I chose before she pursued me while I was still in high school. AITA for saying I regret having children, even though I love them. My wife and I are both 42 and were deep into marriage counseling after our relationship basically fell apart once we had kids, twins, to be specific. Our life has been a whirlwind of problems and disagreements and I'm trying to work through my resentment about having another baby that turned into twins, one of whom we suspect has ADHD and odd. Honestly, he's a handful. So, during one of our counseling sessions, the therapist asked me if I'd have kids if I could do it all over again. I said, honestly, no. I love my kids with all my heart and would do anything for them, but if I could rewind to when I was 24 and had just finished grad school, I wouldn't choose fatherhood. It's not the fulfilling experience people make it out to be. Sure, I love my kids, but the sacrifices in the life I've ended up living, working a job I hate just to support the family, while silently wishing things were different, aren't worth it to me, I had a much happier life before kids. Now, I'm just getting by day to day. My wife is furious. She took it the wrong way and even told our six-year-old, Daddy wishes you were never born. That is just beyond the pale. I am livid. You don't say that to a kid. Yes, I regret having kids, but that doesn't change how much I love them. I would never hurt them or intentionally upset them. What I said was in a marriage counseling session, a supposed safe space for discussing feelings. This has blown up into a huge fight. Our marriage is on the brink, and I'm worried she'll use this against me in court, trying to get sole custody and paint me as some kind of monster. 
she can't seem to grasp that you can love your kids and still feel that parenthood was not the right choice for you. I have three kids, not four. One is six, and the other two are four. When I talk about resenting having twins, I'm not blaming my wife. But having three kids is more than we planned for, and I've had to pick up a lot of overtime to manage, which I wouldn't have needed to if we just had two kids. That's part of what I resent, along with the challenges of dealing with our child who has ADHD and odd. This child is constantly defiant, throws tantrums, hits, kicks, and is just overall incredibly difficult. It's a non-stop struggle, and it's exhausting. I wouldn't choose to have him again if I could. Honestly, most people wouldn't. That doesn't mean I'm not committed to being a good dad and being there for my kids. I'm just saying that if I could hit rewind and redo my life, I wouldn't make the same choices. I regret a lot of things, including marrying my wife, which is why I phrased it that way. As for calling the ADHD slash ODD child a nightmare, you can look up what that means. It's incredibly hard to manage him. He's been kicked out of three daycares, and even my parents refuse to babysit. We never get a break, and it feels like no one can handle the situation. The fallout from that counseling session has been absolutely brutal. I never imagined that saying something so raw and honest in what's supposed to be a confidential and supportive environment would turn into a nightmare. I always thought that in therapy, you're allowed to voice your deepest regrets and struggles without them being weaponized against you. Apparently, I was wrong. My wife's reaction has been harsh, to say the least. She's using my words to attack my character and it's destroying me inside. To make matters worse, the kids are caught in the crossfire. My wife's outburst to our six-year-old was something I never thought she'd do. I get that she's hurt and angry, but telling her child something like that is beyond cruel. It's one thing to be upset with me, but involving our kids in this mess is something else entirely. It's like she's trying to punish me by dragging them into the fallout and it's breaking my heart. Right now I'm just trying to navigate this nightmare the best I can. I'm reaching out to friends and family for support, trying to find a way to deal with the fallout and figure out how to move forward. I'm hoping that with time, my wife and I can find a way to communicate better and heal from this. But it feels like the damage might be too severe. AITA for finally snapping at my stepsister after years of body shaming? My stepsister 20F and I, 24M, have never seen eye to eye. Her mom and my dad got hitched when we were 6 and 10 so we've been in each other's lives for what feels like forever. But if you ask my stepmom, her daughter could walk on water, while I was always the one catching heat for anything that went wrong. My dad? Total pushover, he'd roll over for whatever my stepmom wanted. When I was about 15, life started getting rough. My high school girlfriend dumped me to classic teen drama, my grades tanked, and I quit baseball. Stress eating became my go-to. And before I knew it, I shot up from 125 pounds to 162. That's when my stepsister decided she was cooler than me and started mocking me, fat ass, chubster, you name it. Every time I went to my stepmom about it, she brushed it off saying, she's just teasing, she's so much younger, why are you letting it get to you? I was pissed. I started locking myself in my room with a bag of chips, just trying to avoid her. By the time I was 22, I had ballooned up to 270 pounds, and I knew I was in trouble. I was way over the line and tipping into obesity. So I made a New Year's resolution to turn things around. I cut out junk food and hit the gym hard. Around the same time, my stepsister started packing on some pounds too, don't know why, but she put on over 30 pounds. But she didn't stop belittling me about my weight, even though at this point, I was finally lighter than her. By the end of the year, I had dropped 120 pounds. It felt incredible. And for the first time in forever, I felt like I had control over my life. At Christmas dinner, all the relatives were showering me with compliments, telling me how much better I looked. My stepsister? She just sat there, stewing. Every time someone praised me, she'd throw in a snide remark like, he's still pretty big, or well, he didn't lose that face roundness, or maybe he should work on that gut a little more. It was beyond frustrating, and I could feel the anger building up inside me. And then, she pushed me too far. 
after another one of her digs, look, you know you'll just put it all back on, why do you even bother, I snapped. I yelled, why can't you just be happy for me instead of tearing me down? Her response? Defensive much? That's when I lost it. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hurt your 200-pound feelings? I knew I should have stopped there, but I kept going. Calling me a fat tass, look at your plate, you've eaten half the table, fatty. She burst into tears and ran from the table. My stepmom went ballistic, screaming at me, saying just because I was insecure, I couldn't take it out on everyone else. I fired back, oh, so now you speak up, not a word from you in ten years while I got called, fatty, lardass, and porker. But you're way older, she whined, like that was supposed to make it okay. I couldn't take it anymore, so I left the table and went home. When I woke up this morning, my phone was blowing up with messages from my stepmom, my dad, and my stepsister. They said I wasn't welcome at their house until I apologized. But you know what? I'm not going to. AITA for laughing my ass off when my son demanded a new gaming chair after destroying the first one. I know I probably messed up, but I'm struggling with how bad it really was. My son, who's almost 17, is a big gamer. For Christmas, I bought him an expensive gaming chair. He spends hours playing online shooters and it's his favorite thing, though it sometimes fuels his temper issues. He's been seeing a therapist for these anger issues, and I thought a nice chair would be a good gift since he'd been managing his anger well recently. Well, I was wrong. The day after Christmas, he started playing and, naturally, things didn't go his way. He was losing in the game which got him riled up. The situation escalated, and he ended up slamming his chair to the ground, breaking it. When he came to me later, asking if I could replace it because it was a gift and he really liked it, I lost it. I couldn't help but laugh. It wasn't just a chuckle I was in a full-blown laughing fit. I know it sounds awful, but the more he tried to argue that he deserved a replacement because it was a Christmas gift, the funnier I found it. I was barely able to breathe, and every time he said something like, but I need a chair, or what am I supposed to do now? I laughed even harder. I tried to explain that I was laughing at his feelings, but rather at how absurd it was for him to expect me to replace something he broke out of anger. I told him that respect for belongings comes with maturity, and if he couldn't manage that, then he couldn't expect a new chair. He was absolutely furious and hurt. He felt slighted and disrespected, and I get that now. I feel terrible about laughing, and I can't help but think maybe I had some sort of mini breakdown. It was like I couldn't stop myself from laughing, even though I know it was wrong to react that way. But honestly, his demand felt so ridiculous that I couldn't contain my reaction. My son's still angry with me, and our relationship is strained because of this incident. I understand why he's upset, but I also feel like his request was so out of line that it triggered my response. I'm torn between feeling guilty for my reaction and feeling justified in my frustration over the whole situation. How badly did I mess up here? Was my reaction justifiable, or did I cross a line? I'm really trying to figure out if I handled this poorly or if my son's reaction was just over the top. In the days since the incident, the tension at home has been palpable. My son and I haven't really spoken much since then, and there's this heavy uncomfortable silence between us. I've been reflecting a lot on what happened and questioning my own actions. I can't shake the feeling that my response was a mix of frustration and something deeper. Maybe I was just overwhelmed by the pressures of parenting and trying to manage his anger issues while balancing my own stress. I understand that his request for a replacement chair was out of line, but I'm beginning to see how my reaction might have made things worse. It's clear now that my laughter, though it felt like a release in the moment, came off as dismissive and hurtful. I've realized that while I was trying to make a point about respect and responsibility, my approach was completely wrong. I'm planning to sit down with my son and try to mend things. I need to apologize for my reaction and show him that I can be supportive even when I don't agree with his actions. I hope that by acknowledging my mistake, we can start to rebuild our relationship and work towards understanding each other better. AITA for refusing to sell my rental properties for our wedding. Two years ago, I, 36M, popped the question to my fiancé, 30F, and were set to get married this summer. When we first got together, we both had our own places. She had a nice luxury townhouse, and I owned a couple of properties in the city. We agreed that when it came time to move in together, we'd live in her place. Now I've got this old duplex in a neighborhood that used to be sketchy, but has been gentrifying for a while. 
I rent out the duplex to some fantastic tenants in half of a big industrial building next door to an HVAC guy and some craft brewers. I got these properties about 12 years ago for a steal, and now they're making me a ton of money. I could lose my job tomorrow and be totally fine. But my fiancé doesn't see it like that. Since we moved in together, she's been on my case about selling the properties. And as the wedding gets closer, she's been pushing even harder. She sees those properties as a big pile of cash that we could use for the wedding, honeymoon, or upgrading our living situation. I keep telling her that keeping these properties is like having a safety net. If one of us hits a rough patch, it's a huge help. Last Saturday, we had the biggest blow up yet. I lost my cool and told her straight up that she's a spender and I'm a saver, and I also brought up her credit card debt. Things have been pretty chilly since then. So, am I the bad guy for refusing to sell off my second income? It started fine, but quickly went south, and ended in a big fight that degenerated into a lot of petty shit slinging by the end. She accused me of not trusting her fair, and I pointed out that her habits make it basically impossible to trust her with money anyway, probably not my proudest moment. But, I did again make it clear in no uncertain terms that the properties are staying in the LLC and I won't sell them, and that the financial decisions regarding them would be mine alone. I may have also had a few choice words about the princess for a day wedding she wanted. After a couple of weeks of avoiding each other, and not talking, and me sleeping in the basement of the townhouse, I said I wanted to hit the pause button and leave for a while. She was upset, but didn't say much. I loaded up my things and went to my parents' house and told them what happened. They told me I could stay as long as I needed. Somewhere near the end of April, I got a call from her dad out of the blue, what the hell, demanding to know what was going on and why I'd broken things off. I tried to explain what had been going on, but he was the angry dad of an upset young woman, and I don't think much got through. That call ended with him calling me a scumbag and hanging up on me. I've only had a few properly long-term relationships end in my lifetime, but that's the first time I've had an angry father yell at me about one. There's been no contact since. I'm sad that just over four years of my life with someone went up in smoke like this, but that's the way she goes I guess. My parents didn't seem very surprised when I showed up, so maybe I really was the last one to know what was going on, like so many Redditors were pointing out. For some good news, and also the thing that reminded me to update my Reddit post, is that yesterday I bought another house, one for me to live in. A tiny little brick post-war brick ranch in an old subdivision about 20 minutes from my rentals. It needs work, but I'm looking forward to having a PR joke to take my mind off things. It's going to be strange living on my own again but I think I'll manage. Comment Soul Feaser. Good for you all, I understand that it's hard, but you made the right choice, and with that behavior from her and communication with her dad, honestly you've dodged a bullet. Money is number one reason for divorce. You saved yourself from a lot of stress in the future. After big wedding demands often come big demands when it comes to spoiling the children, then bigger and better house demands, always new car demands. Spend or spend. Which is not a problem if they earn a lot, invest, have secondary income, nice portfolio and savings. It sounds like not only does she doesn't have any of that, but also is not willing to understand and learn about it. You did good for yourself in the long run. And congratulations on the new property. Diversify that property portfolio, baby. So we heard her. I'm glad you got out of this relationship, because it was not going to get better. Leaving aside the issue of whether or not someone should spend that kind of money on a wedding I didn't and wouldn't if I did it again, the truth is that after the wedding there's a whole marriage to get through, and you guys were not on the same page at all. She pretty much torpedoed a good life with financial security because she wanted to pretend for a short period of time to be wealthy as opposed to secure. Grab HR. Good call, I honestly don't understand what was going through her head, why would anyone give up that type of security just to have one big day? Boggles the mind. I who you don't hurt for long, and I'm sure you'll find someone worth your time and effort. AITA for wanting my birthday to be about me and not my sister. I'm turning 16 in less than a month and my parents were all like, hey, let's throw you a party. You know, with my friends and family there to celebrate and everything. And honestly, I let myself get hyped about it. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But now, I'm kind of feeling like maybe I set myself up for disappointment. Let me break it down for you. I've got this little sister, Eva. She's seven. My parents really wanted another kid after I was born, but they struggled for a while. Then, Eva came along born premature and almost didn't make it. So, ever since then, my parents have been all about Ava. When she was a baby, they had to spend a ton of time with her. 
I get it, she needed them. But it didn't just stop when she got older. It's like everything still revolves around her. People used to tell me, oh don't worry, once she gets older, things will go back to normal. Spoiler alert, they never did. My parents always put Ava first. And I get it, she's younger, she needs more attention sometimes, but man, it's tough. Let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, all I wanted for Christmas was a PS5. I made a deal with my parents, if I saved up a certain amount of money, they'd cover the rest as my gift. I was so close, like the store had a drop nearby, and I had the cash ready to go. But then, out of nowhere, my mom tells me Ava needs a haircut, and they want to spoil her a little because she had to go to this developmental pediatrician, and she hates it. So, what happened to my PS5 money? Yeah, I went to pampering Ava. And me? I didn't get the PS5. Instead, I got some clothes and food stuff for Christmas. And when I say, food stuff, I mean like, the kind of stuff we all share, not even my favorite snacks or anything. Just, stuff. It's like I get it, you know? She's the baby, she needs extra care. But sometimes, it feels like I'm just here, on the sidelines, watching everything go down. My high school did an award ceremony in May to celebrate students who helped make the school better. I was given one for helping others in school and acting as a mentor of sorts. Of a school play was on the same day, and both of my parents chose to go to the school play, instead of the award ceremony. They didn't even remember to ask me about it when I got home. My birthdays have always been more aimed at something Ava will enjoy too. We do Chuck E. Cheese where I can bring a friend, or they hire a bounce house for family to come over, but always a smaller one which means I don't get to enjoy it because younger kids and small bounce house. The spotlight always goes to her at least once. She's blown out my birthday candles since she was two. It wasn't her that told our parents, it was the school and my mom had to bring her home early because of how bad it was. She never even has to ask for anything. Our parents will just jump to do whatever they can to make sure she's happy and smiling. Even the slightest frown and they are doing whatever it takes to change it to a smile. This year I really thought it would be different. All the plans were sounding really fun too. Then my parents found out Ava was being bullied in school and was having a rough time. They told me she wasn't looking forward to anything, including my party, and that they thought it would be nice to do something she could enjoy, and give her some of the spotlight on the day, where we assure her she's loved and wanted. I told them it was my birthday and I thought they wanted me to enjoy it. They told me they do, but Ava needs this, and that as her big brother I should be thinking about how to make her feel special. I told them I deserve to feel that way too. Then I told them if they were going to do this to me again, I was done. I told them not everything needs to be about Ava. That she might be their whole world. She might be their whole focus in life. But she is not mine. My parents got so mad at me. My grandpa, my dad's dad, has tried to talk to my parents on my behalf before. He's probably the only adult member of my family who never found the whole thing cute and adorable. But they don't listen to him. I know he actually fought with my dad over me and how my parents were treating me versus Ava. It made no difference to anything. My friends are great. The hardest part with them is when I can only have a friend at my parties and I have to choose between them because we're all tight. They never blamed me for any of it though. They have also given me some really great birthday gifts and not all of them were stuff either sometimes they paid for me to go someplace cool with them. AITA for telling my wife that either she goes back to work or her adult kids start paying rent. I've been married to my wife for about five years now. When we tied the knot, her two kids from a previous marriage, Jason and Carla, became a big part of our lives. Jason, who's now 22 and Carla, who's 19, came with their own set of needs and expectations. Before we got married, we had a thorough discussion about what that would mean for our family dynamics and finances. My wife wanted to stay home with the kids until they graduated high school, and we agreed on a plan. She'd be a stay-at-home mom until they were done with school, then she'd have 18 months to start working part-time again. This would give us time to balance the finances and recover some of my savings. We even mapped out how we'd manage our budget to accommodate this plan. We knew there'd be cutting back on expenses, reducing certain luxuries and making it work on a tighter budget. I didn't foresee how expensive having two teenagers in the house would turn out to be. My bills soared from groceries to extracurriculars. Even with the child support from her ex and a bit of extra help, I found myself digging into my savings more than I'd anticipated. Despite the strain, it was crucial for my wife to be there for the kids until they graduated, so we made it work. 
Jason moved out for college after he graduated high school, and we agreed that Carla would have a year to decide whether she wanted to move out or enroll in nearby schools after she graduated. Well, here we are, and Carla's still living with us, not working or studying. Things recently took a turn. A few days ago, I walked into the kitchen and overheard my wife on the phone with Jason. She was telling him how thrilled she was that he was thinking of moving back in, and how excited she was to have him home. As soon as she hung up, I felt a knot tighten in my stomach. I hadn't been consulted before she made such a commitment. I confronted my wife saying, hold up, you should have run that by me first before making any promises to Jason, I'm not against him coming back, but he needs to know what's expected of him in terms of contributing to the household expenses. My wife's response caught me off guard. She said she'd always told her kids they'd be welcome to return home anytime without worrying about expenses. I tried to reason with her. That's a nice sentiment, but you made that arrangement with your ex when you were married, you didn't make that arrangement with me if Jason's moving back in, he needs to contribute to groceries and utilities, and it wouldn't be fair for him to pay while Carla doesn't have to, so she should pitch in too. My wife firmly disagreed, insisting that her children shouldn't have to pay to live at home. She said they're her kids, and that's the way it should be. Our discussion heated up and I told her, if you feel so strongly about your kids not paying for their keep now that they're adults, maybe it's time for you to go back to work. Since then she's been sleeping in Jason's old room while we're still debating this issue. Her parents have weighed in too, siding with her and saying I shouldn't make her kids pay to live at home. Here's where things get tricky, they're not kids anymore. They're adults. They're not financially dependent minors. And it's not just about the principle of them contributing, it's about the practicalities. Over the past five years, I've been paying for renovations to our house so that both kids would have their own rooms. I split their monthly car insurance costs with their father, cover their clothing expenses, and handle all the streaming services they use. I pay for their medical insurance, food, snacks, spending money, prescriptions, doctor's appointments, and eyeglasses. Carla runs the air conditioning nonstop with her window open, despite our instructions to close it. They take long showers, and there's no central air, just window units that drive up the utility bills. There are costs associated with their hobbies, their phone payments, and the repairs to my car that Carla damaged before her father bought her a new one. The extra expenses have added up significantly, and we've had to cut costs elsewhere to manage it all. I've always been open to helping them get back on their feet if they ever needed to move back in due to dire circumstances. But this isn't a case of them being put out on the street. They're choosing to live at home, and it's reasonable for me to expect them to contribute to the household expenses. I've agreed to support them in tough times but they're not facing a crisis, they're just opting to stay put. I think this is a fair approach. I've done my part and we've made sacrifices to accommodate their needs. I want to support my wife and her kids, but it's essential that everyone pitches in to keep things balanced. This isn't about punishing them or being unreasonable, it's about maintaining financial stability and ensuring that we're not overburdened. AITA for rejecting my stepmother's attempt to adopt me even after 11 years. When I was six, my mom passed away, and my dad turned to one of his close friends, Anna. They ended up getting married when I was seven. The day of the wedding, Anna dropped the bombshell that she wanted to adopt me. My dad was totally into it, but I lost it when she brought it up. I kinda wrecked the wedding vibe. For the next year, we went through some heavy-duty therapy. The therapist and my dad and Anna kept pushing this idea that I needed a mom for my own safety, and that it wasn't a betrayal of my mom to let another loving woman into my life. They even had the therapist put in a recommendation for the adoption to go through in court. When it was time for the judge to talk to me, I made it crystal clear. I'd run away if they tried to adopt me, and I was serious. The judge asked why I didn't want to be adopted, and I told him straight up. He listened and decided that no adoption would be approved in his court until I was fully on board with it. They did try again, requesting a different judge, but received the same response. I was asked constantly to change my mind. Anna would put her all into trying to fill the place of a mom in my life. Every time I told her she could never be my mom she took it as a challenge to try harder, and better, and she would dedicate so much time to me it was crazy. I never appreciated it because instead of just being Anna, and instead of my dad telling her to just be Anna, she saw mom as the only thing she wanted. Even when she had kids of her own, I was their oldest son, I was her son, her boy, she'd call herself a boy mom. Whereas I have never called her mom. If we're being honest I don't even love her after all these years. I see her as more of an intrusive family member who won't stop. My relationship with my dad is also not the best because I don't like that he wouldn't take no for an answer, and that he was so quick to try and push an adoption. 
Even after I told him I would rather be with grandparents, or an aunt slash uncle or close family friend to Anna if he died, he insisted being with Anna and her being my mom was the best for me. I turned 18 a few months ago, and I ran like my ass was on fire to get away from dad and Anna. I lived with my maternal grandparents for a little while before moving in with my maternal uncle who lived near a really good apprenticeship I wanted to join. My paternal grandparents celebrated their wedding anniversary this past weekend and I was there. While there Anna approached me and handed me papers for an adult adoption. She told me she loved me and she wanted me to know it was not too late, that she would still adopt me and she wanted to make our relationship official as mother and son. I asked her how she could be so delusional when I have said no to being adopted for 11 years now. I told her I would not change my mind. She and my dad were so pissed at my choice of words and chaos ensued at the party. Comment Throw away 25. Her continued insistence all these years, and the way she goes about it is sus af. Is there a deeper and hidden reason for her insistence? What else does she stand to gain if you accept? Or lose if you refuse? OOP. I think she loses the fantasy she had in her head. I feel like she wanted to be the stepmother people talk about as being the good example, the one who had such a good relationship that she adopted her stepkid, that he loved her just as much if not more than his own mom who died, and that she was good enough to help me forget the pain of losing her, and that she was enough to make all that fade away into a neatly wrapped family. I also feel like she has issues with the being treated differently to my dad and my mom. Like she doesn't want to be less than, she wants to be the exact same, to have me love her the same, and treat her the same, and for it to be again, wrapped in a bow perfect. Financial Budget 4023 And I'm glad you are around better people. Have you ever spoke to her dad alone about this? Or is there any other family members that have tried to speak to them? OOP I have spoken to my dad, it doesn't help. There's nobody they will listen to so I don't even try anymore. I kept away and only showed up for other family, and they still didn't get it. AITA, for not backing up my mom and laughing at my brother's wedding request. I'm a 27-year-old man, and I have a beautiful wife named Amara, who is 26. I want to start by giving you some context about my past before diving into the recent drama. When I was 17, I had a girlfriend who was my high school sweetheart. We'd been together since kindergarten. Even though our relationship was more of a formality during elementary and middle school, we made it official in high school. It was supposed to be a serious relationship, but things took a turn when I found out that she had been seeing my brother behind my back. It hurt immensely, especially since my parents knew about the situation, but thought our relationship was just a phase, despite me telling them first. That betrayal was a massive blow. I decided to focus on my studies and moved out of my parents' house, especially since they didn't show any sympathy for my situation. My ex-girlfriend tried to apologize and wanted to stay friends, but I just couldn't deal with it and ignored her. After graduating, I moved to Texas at 19. I kept in touch with my family only during holidays. Two years after moving, I met Amara at her mother's bakery. We started as friends because we both had trust issues, but our relationship grew deeper, and we became a couple a year later. Our relationship was wonderful, and I got along great with her family, and they welcomed me warmly. Our wedding was a fantastic event although my parents and brother didn't attend. Despite sending them an invitation and calling them the day before, they didn't show up. I realized that if Amara were ever in an argument, even if she was in the wrong, I'd always have her back. That's how deep my commitment to her is. Fast forward to a week ago, my mother called me, and since Amara and I were cooking together, I put the call on speaker. My mom knows all about the issues with my family and my brother, so I didn't think much of it. My mom started by telling me that my brother and my ex are getting married, and then she made a surprising request, she wanted me to be his best man. There was a moment of silence, and then Amara and I both burst into laughter. It was a mix of shock and amusement, and it felt almost surreal. My mom hung up the phone, and we continued to enjoy our evening without thinking much of it. The next morning my phone was bombarded with angry texts from my brother and dad. They were furious because they believed I had hurt my mother's feelings and made her cry by not telling Amara to stop laughing. They felt I had been disrespectful, and the texts were filled with frustration and disappointment. A week after the incident I decided to address the situation with my brother. I confronted him about how unfair it was that he didn't attend my wedding but was now asking me to be a part of his. It turned out that my brother didn't want to come to my wedding, and my mother made up a lie about the invitation and the best man request. 
My brother never actually asked me to be his best man or invited me to his wedding. I called my mother to get some clarity, and she admitted that she just wanted her sons to get along again. I realized that accepting the fake offer would only make things worse, given the falsehood of the invitation. For the sake of my wife and our future, I decided to limit contact with my family. I wanted to focus on Amara and our upcoming baby, and avoid any further drama. The situation escalated when a friend of my ex found out about my post and shared it. The news spread quickly and I began receiving hurtful messages from my family and my ex's friends. I decided to turn off my phone to avoid the negativity and focus on spending quality time with my wife and her family. We're now preparing for the arrival of our baby and I'm grateful for the support from my wife's side of the family. In a final update, here's where things stand now. 1. My family is no longer in my life. I have decided to cut off all contact with them. 2. Amara read my post and the comments. She loved the support but was upset that I described her reaction as a giggle. She wanted me to clarify that it was actually a full cackle. 3. Our baby is growing healthy and we're hopeful for a girl. Yeah, Tay, for being upset with my friend who ditched me after her date. So my friend called me earlier today, all pumped up about her date and really wanting to meet up afterward. I had plans to catch up with someone else first, but I told her, no problem, we can definitely hang out later. After I finished with the other person, I called her like we'd agreed, and she told me she was just heading to her date but still wanted to meet up after. By this time it was 8.38 p.m., and I was already pretty close to home. I let her know I needed to be home by 11 p.m., but she insisted we meet after her date, promising it'd only last an hour. I thought, fine, I'll just hang out at the mall where she's meeting the guy, and we'll catch up when she's done. It's exhausting trying to explain why I'm upset when it feels so clear to me, I kept thinking we were on the same page, but clearly, we're not. Her dismissive response makes me feel even more isolated. It's like no matter how much effort I put into our friendship, it's never enough. I'm questioning if this relationship is worth all the emotional turmoil. Maybe it's time to reevaluate what I need and who I want to surround myself with. I need to focus on my own well-being and stop letting this mess drain me. I head to the mall and wait. An hour goes by, then an extra 15 minutes. I call her to let her know I'm there, and she asks for 15 more minutes. At this point I'm thinking, okay, she's wrapping things up and we'll finally meet. But then, 15 minutes later, she calls back and says she can't meet anymore because she decided to stay with the guy. I was seriously pissed off. I came all the way here just to see her, waited over an hour and she ends up ditching me. When I brought it up trying to explain how she messed up, she fixated on this one part where I said, this isn't how I treat my friends. She twisted it, accusing me of making personal digs, and saying I was implying she treats her friends badly, which wasn't my intention at all. At this point I was already heated, and her reaction just made it worse. Here's her last message. No you listen. I can't believe I'm repeating this over and over. When I hung up at 8.38 p.m., I said I was coming to the mall, which means I did come, and you're saying I didn't call doesn't change that you knew I was coming. We discussed meeting after my date, and you knew it was supposed to be just an hour. I don't see the confusion. And why would I call you if you're in the middle of something? I told you I'd be at the mall, waiting for you to finish up. I should have just gone home, but you said you wanted to meet, so I agreed. And the 15 minutes thing. I called you, you said give me 15 minutes. I was already at the mall, you knew that. You knew I came just to see you, and then you said you couldn't come. Isn't that rude? You knew I came to meet you. It's not a misunderstanding. Just put yourself in my shoes. I'm sorry if my tone seems harsh. But this is me. This whole conversation was supposed to be about how you treated me, not about how I express myself. I've never had anyone treat me this way. I would have never treated you like that. Her response. You called me in the middle of my date anyway. I wish you'd called earlier to avoid this. Please don't attach meaning to my actions. It doesn't reflect how I feel about you. I'm extremely understanding about this stuff and I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. I know I'd handle it differently and definitely wouldn't taunt a friend about how they treat others based on this incident. The fact is, you were there, and I couldn't meet you. It happens to the best of us. Calling me names and dissecting my character for not showing up was unnecessary and rude. Your messages made it seem like I do this intentionally and that I'm a terrible friend, which wasn't fair. You saying you're harsh and that's just who you are is a sign that you might need to self-reflect as well. 
I didn't mean to avoid you, it just didn't work out because of poor communication. When stuff like this happens, you cut people some slack. Next time just give me a heads up so I'm not waiting around. After all you've said, I'd know how to communicate better with you in the future. I'm done discussing this. I need some time off. I'm still fuming over the whole situation. It's like she's missing the point entirely. I made an effort, showed up, and waited only to be blown off for a date. It's not just about her not meeting up, it's about how dismissive she was of my time and feelings. I feel like I'm always the one who ends up compromising, and when I finally voice my frustration it gets turned against me. I'm left questioning if I'm overreacting or if my feelings are valid. Either way, I'm drained and really need to take a step back and figure out where things stand. It's exhausting trying to explain why I'm upset when it feels so clear to me, I kept thinking we were on the same page, but clearly, we're not. Her dismissive response makes me feel even more isolated. It's like no matter how much effort I put into our friendship, it's never enough. I'm questioning if this relationship is worth all the emotional turmoil. Maybe it's time to reevaluate what I need and who I want to surround myself with. I need to focus on my own well-being and stop letting this mess drain me. AITA for refusing to accommodate my daughter's vegan diet. My wife and I have eight kids. When we got married, I had two kids who are now 21 and 19, and she had three who are now 23, 21, and 16. Our story today revolves around our 13-year-old Gina, who's our first together, and was born into this blended family. Gina doesn't have any childcare duties and struggles to keep her own space clean, let alone help out with the rest of the house. Recently, Gina told me she wants to go vegan. I said, all right, that's your choice. I added, I'm fine with covering the groceries, but if you want to go vegan, you're going to have to plan and cook your own meals, no relying on frozen dinners or takeout, gotta keep things fresh and healthy, your mom and I will make sure your meals are up to standard before we go grocery shopping. Gina wasn't thrilled with this. She wanted us to adjust our diet to accommodate her, like switching to vegan pasta and cooking the meatballs separately. We told her that wasn't going to happen. We're not changing our entire eating habits just because she wants to be vegan. She took this news, went to her room, and then things got a bit out of hand. She started sending me and my wife links to high-end kitchen sets. One set was around $800 and, and matching plates, cups, and bowls that cost about $200. She said she needed these items because our current kitchenware was contaminated for her vegan needs. I told her, look, our kitchen gear is perfectly fine if you want new stuff, You'll need to buy it yourself with your allowance or get a side gig like babysitting. Later that day, I got a call from one of my sons saying Gina was demanding that he and the other kids remove all their snacks from the game room fridge, which has a kitchenette because she needed it for her vegan food. When I asked her about this, she said her vegan food couldn't be in the same fridge as our food and that it wasn't fair to make her go all the way to the garage when she was hungry. So, she thought taking over the game room kitchenette was a good compromise. I had to put my foot down and refuse her unreasonable demands. I told her she couldn't be vegan while living in my house under these conditions. She threw a temper tantrum, accusing me of being cruel, and she's barely spoken to me since. Now, I'm wondering if I'm the asshole here. Edit. As for why I'm not changing our meals to suit her, I don't adjust our cooking for the other kids either. They know from a young age that they either eat what I cook or make something themselves. For instance, my 19-year-old hates mushrooms. I cook with mushrooms whenever I want, and if she doesn't like it, she makes her own sauce. The vegan thing isn't going to be any different. I don't provide special meals for the other kids every week. They eat what I cook or make their own food. Going back to the spaghetti example, my 19-year-old dislikes mushrooms, but everyone else likes them in the sauce, so she makes her own. We barbecue every Sunday, and I offered to grill a vegan burger along with the regular burgers, but she didn't want that because the burgers are cooked on the same grill with the same spatula. She says she wants to be vegan for the animals, but so far, it's only been about her food. I haven't seen her give up her leather, cashmere, or wool clothes. AITA for hesitating to connect with my girlfriend's kids after discovering she slept at her ex's place. I'm here looking for some advice because honestly, I don't have many friends who want to hear about my relationship drama. My girlfriend and I have been dating for six months, but we've been close friends for years. I'm 39, and so is she. Here's the situation. I caught my girlfriend lying to me. 
She told me she was going to hang out with her girlfriends after we had a fight, saying we just needed some space for the day. But she never really does that, she's been pretty clingy. So I found out she actually went to her ex-boyfriend's place and stayed the night there. She claimed she just had too much to drink and didn't want to drive home, but she knew it was wrong to lie to me. She begged me for another chance and promised she'd be honest with me from now on. Because I love her a lot and believe she has strong feelings for me, I gave her another shot. She agreed to share her location with me to ease my worries. This is her last chance though, no more room for mistakes. Now, she has two kids, 8 and 15. She wants me to come to the 15-year-old's volleyball game this weekend, but I'm really anxious about getting involved with her kids right now, especially after everything that's happened. Just after she stayed at her ex's, I took her kids out for pizza and ice cream for one of their birthdays, not knowing what had gone down. After finding out I felt so stupid and played, like I was just a pawn in their drama. I know it's not the kid's fault, but I'm struggling to shake the feeling that I'm being manipulated or used. I've been questioning if it's too soon for me to step into their lives fully, or if I'm being overly sensitive because of the recent betrayal. I want to do the right thing, but I also don't want to rush into anything and regret it later. So now I'm feeling hesitant about doing anything with her kids. I'm not sure how to explain this to her or if I'm being unreasonable. What do you think? Am I the asshole for feeling this way? Comment Alone lab, not the asshole. It's her fault she lied to you and was disloyal, there's more she probably did than she didn't mention. You're not obligated to hang out with children that aren't yours. She is most likely using you so she can do other things with her ex. To be honest, I would completely cut her off. Op replied, Hey, thanks for the feedback. I do want to believe she is sincere in her remorse and mistakes, but I am really weary and suspicious of everything now, I have no doubt she loves me and it's not like she's got me doing shit for her kids while she's out doing whatever, I would never be with her kids alone. I just feel weird being involved with them now at this stage, considering it's so soon after what just happened. I'm really trying to be careful right now for a while, and I want to know how I should bring it up to her that I am still really angry about the last time I did anything with her and the kids, not to mention paid for everything, not that it was a huge amount of money or anything. Alone lab, completely taken advantage of you, I would honestly request her to send the money back. Vegetable method Cheaters deserve to be dumped. Op replied, Yes and I agree, but this has been my friend for all of my adult life. We know everything about each other for better or worse. We never once crossed that line and always remained close platonic friends, until this year, something happened, and it brought us together, and it was the most amazing thing for both of us. Even my one guy friend told me that this is worth another shot with her because use you never find this kind of love. I hope he's right. My wife rocks, not the asshole, you don't really believe her, do you? She got drunk and fell asleep nothing else happened. In your experience when a woman came to your house alone and had drinks and spent the night what happened? That's exactly what happened here. She was pissed off at you, so she fucked her ex to get back at you. Let that sink in. Whatever you do, don't have kids with her. Op replied, no, I don't believe her at all, I just assume they FC kid, even though she denies it to this point, I don't have absolute proof, but if I were to bet on it, they definitely did, she says she blocked him on all platforms, and I know for a fact she did on Instagram, at least. I do know she's not friends with him on Facebook, and she no longer has Snapchat because her phone is broken, and she can't download any apps I know this, I tried, but I'm looking to try and move on, and just be cautious but if it ever happens again. Oh and I don't plan on having kids ever, and she doesn't want any more, but just for the record, she came over to my house the next day, and her pussy was freshly shaven after not being shaved for weeks the day before. Her excuse was, she honestly just did it to make herself feel better after our fight because she was in such a bad way. My wife rocks, yeah, just so you know, this is now the precedence for your fights. She will get pissed and go fck and x her some random. That's your future. Sorry brother. I've been there you don't want what comes next. Op replied, well, for the foreseeable future, she's gonna be sharing her location with me as she offered and agreed to. If all of a sudden her phone isn't working after we get into a fight, I'll just assume the worst. My wife rocks, 
cheaters up their opsec when they're caught. It's easy to leave her phone at her mom's house for a few hours. Op replied, and if she doesn't respond for hours I'll also know, she texts me all through her day, never more than 30 minutes between messages, but yes she's already upped her ability to hide shit before on smaller stuff that I called her out on. They love you mom, not the asshole. It's completely fine, if you're hesitant to do anything at all. I would be pretty upset if my girlfriend did that to me. If I were you, I honestly would just sit down with her. Op replied, I will admit she's definitely very willing to talk about things and own up to her mistakes. We've definitely had a lot of long talks about how we're gonna move forward, but one thing we've never talked about was how I want to kind of not get too involved with the kids anymore for a while, at least until we see how things go. If it were any other woman, I would have cut her off immediately when I saw the red flags, but she's been a really close friend of mine for over a decade and recently really helped me out in a time of need, we made such good friends, and it was like bliss falling in love with her this year, we wanted each other so badly and still do, so I don't want to throw all that away, but the resentment is still there and I do want to keep my guard up for a while. Real concern, you are the asshole for taking her back and continuing to invest in her kids, while you have only dated for six months. Do you think it will get better? It's only been six months, and she already cheated on you. You are being gaslit into raising her kids. Her kids are innocent in this, the best thing for them is for you to not be involved with them, as it is still early enough for you to exit. Imagine after two or three years? You are going to have enough of her bullshit after the NTH time she goes with her girlfriends, to look for another man to have fun with while you stay home with the kids. When you do leave her, it's going to leave her kids traumatized with you missing. Don't let it get to that. They need their dad, which I'd bet she is preventing them from seeing. Not the asshole for not wanting to spend time with her kids, just follow through and dump her ass. Middle instance, not the asshole. That being said, if you can't fully trust her now, Will you ever be able to trust her? Or is it something that's going to be in the back of your mind for the remainder of the relationship, festering away until you begin to resent her? Op replied, I'm giving it a chance to see if it can be built back up, I'll be honest, I'm still really weary and have my guard up, I will be asking her to show me her phone randomly and having her send me her locations, and if any of that is an issue, it's over for good, I'm giving her a chance because of how much she's meant to me over the years. AITA refusing to stand by my sister, the heartbreaking reason I can't be her maid of honor. As you might notice, I'm the snarky one. I've got four older brothers and one twin sister, Violet, we're both 31. We were an oops baby, and then the WTF babies when mom found out her oops came with a spare. For all intents and purposes, I'm the spare. My parents did want a girl. They wanted a girl. Big difference. We're not identical, and Violet is absolutely beautiful, feminine, bright, and bubbly. She's goddamn Jean Grey of the X-Men practically. I'm more of Rogue, not the classic one, more like that cartoon reboot from the 2000s when they made them all teens, and Rogue was standoffish, self-sabotaging, and goth. We were really close, and I didn't really notice us drifting apart truly until high school, and by then, I had my own problems. One being fucking Daniel Swift fake name, this sloppy knob was always picking on me. He and his crew made school and community events absolute hell for me since grade school. By middle school, he had a name for me, it's to do with my Earl name, so let's say for this, it's Lumpy Lily. It's a name to remind me that I was fat. Looking back I know I wasn't, puberty hit me fast and hard and boom, baby got back. He was relentless and his friends were too. I told on him once because a teacher found me crying as I was forcing myself to throw up in the bathroom during practice. I don't know how but he managed to turn it around on me, saying I was bullying him, and his friends vouched for him, so I got suspended from the team during the season and had to write an apology letter in detention. He once slapped me and I went to tell, but he denied it, saying I punched him in the stomach, and he turned on the waterworks, and his friends said they saw me hit him and call him a loser. My parents were so upset with me, and my dad had to leave work to pick me up. He didn't believe me at all that I didn't do these things. He would rant that I'm not the only kid and I need to stop being so much trouble. So I shut down, kept my head down, and didn't bother to say anything. He called me the defective one, the spare, the botched clone, everything he could think of. Some were admittedly clever, but all were cruel. When Daniel picked on me, I would ignore him, and if I couldn't, I just endured it. 
I got into some hobbies, even made a good friend, Sonny, and now 31. Fast forward to now. I live a state over and have my main job as an educator. I love what I do. It feels good most of the time, but hey, this ain't Disney, sometimes being a teacher sucks raw rotten eggs in the summer heat, to be sure. But I get to be the adult I wish I had in the room when I was young. Sonny lives a city over from me, which in all honesty is a mere 20 men drive in traffic. So we see each other often. She's easily my best friend. Violet and I are still close, and same with my brothers, but we're all 30 plus now, some with kids and spouses and full ass lives, so we don't talk much. Violet and I would have calls and sometimes FaceTimes. My sister is incredible. She became a nurse, but quickly realized she wanted to be a nurse practitioner, and now she is out there helping people in need by donating most of her time outside of work at the shelter in our hometown. She looks after our parents and makes sure they have all they need. She owns a house, has an Etsy business, a blog, hell, a TikTok. She's kicking ass and I couldn't be prouder. Last year she was all excited because she thought she found the one. She called him James. Every picture of him, he's this big ex-military dude with tats and a beard and those douchey big sunglasses some guys never take off to save their lives. You know the ones. No shade if you do that too, but if you also own a truck as well and have a come and take it sticker on it, a teensy bit of shade. Cause James did. So this past Easter rolled around, and I was talking with Vi about how excited I was to be around her and the boys again, and she mentioned that she was bringing James. I don't remember what I said, but I said something about being excited to finally meet this guy since dad and our eldest brother already have and said he's a stand-up dude. She got quiet and kinda had the tone like, yeah about that, so I paused to ask what was wrong. She said she needed to talk to me because James is my old crush from school. I was confused because while I was close with my siblings, I never talked about crushes with most of them, and definitely not Violet. It just wasn't what we talked about. I said I don't remember crushing on a James. And that's when she said that he went by his middle name, Daniel, in school. Now, Daniel's Earl name is pretty common, so I was like, well, I don't remember a Daniel I crushed on, but which one do you mean? And we narrowed it down to that soggy twatsicle. There wasn't much to say after that other than I never had a crush on him. She was relieved to hear that. She said she actually didn't realize James and Daniel were one and the same herself until he brought it up on like the fourth date or something, and then she felt bad, but by then, she was already developing feelings and couldn't bear the thought of hurting me nor walking away from her chance at love. I decided to tell her a bit at Easter, and I did pull her aside before he arrived, as we all stay the night before over at the parents' house. I told her most of what I've not told you. This guy made my life hell. Violet was devastated, and she kept saying, you're sure it's him, and that was years ago, maybe you've got it wrong, to the point that I got frustrated and sort of gave up. Easter was tense, but Daniel did say hi to me like, long time no see remember me, and I just said, oh I do, and kept my distance. We all got together again for Juneteenth, and of course Dandy Daniel was there, but this time Vi had a ring. My mother screamed with excitement, whooping through the restaurant telling any and everyone her baby girl is getting married. When the parents went home, a sibling's bar hopped the main street in the city to catch parts of the parade. Vi pulled me aside and inquired why I was avoiding her, and I just said I am happy for her if he makes her happy, she's my sister, and I would die for her. It's just complicated that he's my bully from school, and I don't want to be around him. She got quiet and said, well, thank goodness the bridesmaids and the groomsmen won't be interacting a lot, and as MOH, I would have minimal contact with him on the actual day. Then she started talking dresses, and I stopped her. I don't think I can be maid of honor. I don't feel comfortable in the same space as this person. MOH usually is a big job and interacts a lot with the couple. She shot back that, well after he will be her husband so, am I to avoid him the rest of our natural lives, how when they have kids, how do I plan to pull that off? She broke down, saying I am ruining everything for my misconceptions about him and making it out that she has to choose between her love and her sister, and it's not fair. I said, whoa hold on, what misconceptions that he bullied me? Even now, in our thirties he can't admit to pushing me, hitting me, calling me every name he could come up with, and worse, she was hoovering his bullshit like a buffet. Now, my sister is still in the group chat acting like I am MOH. My older brother is nudging me to just get over myself and not stress Violet out. Then this morning, I am added to a new chat with a few folks and my sister. She texted us as the wedding party and listed me as the MOH. I wanted to call her to remove this, 
but now I am second guessing. I am happy to attend, hell, I will bartend, sing, give a speech, anything, but I just don't want to stand up there as if I am on board with this. Maybe he's changed and that's well. But it took years of therapy, lots of love from my friends, an intense amount of support groups, and so much effort to get to the somewhat normal I have. I don't purge anymore, I don't cut anymore, I actually communicate with my partner and my friends. It took so much to get over all that fucking hurt. And when I'm with my family, I'm labeled as trouble despite years of not asking for anything, not wanting to rock the boat with them. It feels like I can't be myself back home now, and it sucks, but this extra layer, Daniel, I can't just plaster a fake smile on, grin and bear this like I did. 